here's an example. Um, I'm going to hand label this simple image. So I could assign the value, the label 1, to that group of 4, assuming that I'm using the 4 connected option. Um, this group is not connected to the first using 4 connected, so I could assign that a 2, let's say. This would be a 3, and that would be a 4. If I use the 8 connected convention, then um, these two are actually connected using the 8 connected um, convention. So those would all get the same label, for example, a 1. And I would still have the other two blobs here. So this algorithm is actually f very fast to implement in a computer. It just takes one pass through the image to assign temporary labels and record equivalences. So an equivalence class, equivalence set, is a set of elements that are considered to be all the same. So those are going to be the temporary labels that actually all belong to the same object. And then a second pass goes through and replaces those temporary labels with equivalence labels. So if B is the input binary image, L is going to be our output labeled image. So the algorithm works like this. So I'm going to scan through my binary image from left to right, top to bottom, visit each pixel. Wherever I have a 0, then of course I have no object, so my output would be a 0. If I happen to hit a 1, then I start assigning labels in the label image. So if um, if I hit a 1 in the labeled image, I examine the pixels above and to the left of my, uh, my current location because I want to use the same label that th my neighbors have had. If my neighbors have no label, so if the pixel above me, which is R-1C, is 0, and the label to the left of me, which is an R C minus 1, is 0. Then I want to start a new label. So I'm going to assign a, uh, a new label number. Let's, let's just call it num label plus plus. So I'm going to um, keep a uh, counter of the number of labels I have and just increment that counter. If instead, let's say I have a label above me, so there's a one, I, there's a uh, component above me, but not to the left. So in other words, the pixel above me is not zero, but the pixel to the left of me is zero. Okay, so I've visited both of those, and I know that the one above me has already been labeled. So I'm connected to that one, so I should use the label of the one above me. Another case might be if the label to the left of me is not, is, is not zero, it's been assigned, but the label above me is zero. In which case, again, I'm connected to the pixel to the left of me, so I should use his label. Okay, and the final case is, what if both of them are not zero? So the pixels above and to the left have already been assigned labels. The problem is they might be different labels. So this might be L1, that might be L2. So we're connected to both of them. We know we're going to be um, assigned to, to that same label, but they're equivalent. So let's just arbitrarily pick the one above, and we're going to record that 
uh, L1 and L2 are equivalent. And let me just finish with ends here. So to record things that are equivalent, um, I could just make a table of equivalence labels and for each entry record what the temporary labels are. So for example, equivalence label 1 might have temporary labels 1 and 2. Equivalence label 2 might have 3. Equivalence label 3 might have 4, 5, 6, etc. That would not be a very efficient way to store the table, but um, it, it would certainly do the trick here. So let's hand label, let's run that algorithm on this simple image here. So I go through this binary image, hit a 1, that's the first, I don't see any pixels above and to the left, so I create a new label called 1. Hit the next one, uh, I see a label to the left of me, so I'll use his, that's a 1. Hit one here, nothing to the above or to the left, so I make a new label called 2. Here I see um, a neighbor above, I'll use his label, that's a 1. Same thing here, same thing there, that would be a 2. Coming on the next row, I get a 1 here, a 1 there, and here's the case now where I have a neighbor above and to the left. I'll use the label above, which is a 2, but then record the equivalence that equivalence class 1 is actually um, consisting of temporary labels 1 and 2. And then finishing up with the final row. So the second pass would go through and replace these temporary labels with the equivalence labels, nam namely the 1s and the 2s both go to 1s. So I would find that all of these pixels wind up in the same connected component. So in MATLAB has a function to do this called BW label. So BW label takes as input a binary image, which we might get with IM to BW, and generates an image of labels. So I'll run that on this image here. Um, let me get that. So that's my image. It's actually of type uint8, as you see here. So I'll threshold it to convert it to binary. Uh, let me use uh, m to bw. And the threshold, I'll use just this gray thresh, whatever that produces here. OK, so this is w now, which is you can see a type logical here. Okay, so I'll use BW label on W and I'll assign that to a label image. Um, it also gives you the option of outputting the number of labels that are found called NW. So NW, it's found 17 labels and let me display the label image, LW. So this image um, is a grayscale image consisting of the label numbers of each connected component. So you can see the different shades of gray here. Let me just blow that up. So, um, let me get this a little bit bigger here. So I'll move this little region up, and 
you can see this this disk here is labeled number six um, all the pixels in there are labeled six there's actually a little region here labeled 10 here's a region labeled 9 etc there's also as you can see um, an adjacent disk that is connected and it's so that it also has the, the label 6 um, so finally we can visualize these labels a little easier by doing a false coloring on them there's a function called label to RGB so I'll apply that to the label image and I'll get a color image that I'll call RGB. So this is the result of that. So it's randomly assigned a color to each of those unique labels that it found there. Also, if, if I wanted to look for a for the black regions, so I so B W label only labels the white regions. If I wanted to label the black regions, I'd have to invert the original image and then run BW label again. So let me do that. So I'll say black is the complement of the image. So now I have white, you see where I had black before. And then I could run a uh, BW label on that to get the uh, black labels. Um, let me just do that. Call it LB and NB. So now I have 19 black regions. And let me show those. So you can see the different um, colors for the different black regions. Of course, this background region is all a continuous, a single connected region, which is this dark blue. OK, so now we've extracted connected components. We can do some processing on those components. So we're going to look at these operations, dilation and erosion, and opening and closing. So these are useful for shrinking and expanding regions or eliminating small regions or holes that might be due to noise. And we're going to perform these operations using a structuring element, S, which is really just a small binary image. And it's analogous to a filter mask that we saw in spatial filtering.